If you have the cabbage powder, would you put that powder right there in the shot? Thank you. That Jiffy cabbage powder, you may have some generic. Go ahead, you can take that out, thanks. Okay. The directions call for putting one scoop, what, one of these little scoops in 50 milliliters of water, okay? That is not gonna work. We're trying to do a drop method for titration. So what we ended up doing is we put in a tiny bit of the powder. And I see, I mean tiny bit of the powder. Like I did it that worked pretty well was just with a fraction of that little tiny scoop, which I have no idea what volume that is. No idea. So now she's going to put in 10 drops of vinegar. And then she's going to stir in with the powder. And notice the color. So we've got the chart right next to it. Nice bright red, which is great. What that is, is this is definitely the color for an acid, okay? Now, she's going to take base. We know the base concentration is one molar. She's going to add them drop by drop, counting the drops. After each drop, notice she's stirring this up. You're going to see a change in the color with each drop. Notice what the color is doing. We're, it's still kind of a fuchsia, more, of, more pinky. We're looking for that medium purple. We're getting close. So each time, see, we're getting pretty close, but if you'll see the difference in a second, ah, we're very close. How many drops was that? Seven. Ah, good. One more drop should be exactly it. Now, how do you tell if that's right or not? The, to me, this looks like it's pretty close to the right color purple. Put in, so this was, was that eight? Okay, yes. that's eight. Now, add, please add um, three more drops. So we can see, if we, well, actually, let's see if we can get a purple. Let's do one more and see if we get, we want a more of a pink, uh, blue rather. Let's see how, well, how many drops to get blue. Let's try one more drop. We're trying to get that color blue so you can see. It's, we've had, we did this before and it kind of goes right to green, which means base. It doesn't have a nice gra gradation going from purple to blues like that. This is what we've been seeing, the green. Okay, so you're trying to get it to the purple. And yes, this is not going to be terribly exact. It's not going to be an exact science. But if you put too many drops in, it'll turn blue to green that means it's a base and you've gone too far. Your goal is trying to find that midpoint, seven, where you've neutralized the acid in the, in this case, in a little paint palette with the base that you're adding. Dr. Wiley for experiment 10.2, the acid-base titration, he explains how to take red cabbage leaves and boil them to make cabbage indicator. Here's what we're doing. I'm using the red cabbage Jiffy Juice powder. The recipe calls for one of these tiny little scoops, okay, and 50 milliliters of distilled water, and stir, okay? So this is my indicator solution instead of using the red cabbage and creating it. Okay, so we've already prepared our indicator with the red cabbage juice. So the next thing is we're taking a beaker and we added 10 milliliters of the ammonia to the beaker. The next step is to add 90 milliliters of distilled water to the beaker and then stir the solution. The next says a little less than half. So this is, we prepared 50 milliliters. Let's go ahead and add about 20 milliliters of the red cabbage juice into this mixture. It does not have to be exact. Okay. So you're gonna add that in 
and don't forget to stir it. Notice the color. It is a greenish blue. That indicates the presence of the base ammonia. Okay, now we're going to go right down to figuring out the, we're going to go right down to the rough titration is where we add vinegar. So she has measured 50 milliliters of vinegar, pan over to vinegar, okay? What she's going to do is take some of the vinegar and add it to the ammonia. What we're trying to do is figure out how much of the vin vinegar we need until it changes to a neutral pH. We've got the red cabbage juice indicator chart, pH chart here. So we're gonna put it in, we're looking for a change in color. We want to go till it's a pinkish red color. So notice it's, the color is definitely changing. What we're gonna see is, see now look, there was a pinkish change, but it didn't remain. So notice she stirred it. Now notice, look, boom. So right before it change, it changes, okay? You're gonna start seeing streaks. You, that's why each time you put a little bit in, stir it. Put a little bit in, stir it. So you can measure the point that it changes into this pink. That's called the end point. The point, the drop that changes. Now lastly, we need to see how much vinegar she used. So we started with 50 milliliters. She's gonna pour that back in and measure how many milliliters remain. And don't forget to get it eye level when you look to see how many milliliters. 15. We use 15. Okay, we use 15. Stop. So what we're going to do is show you how to do the acid-base neutralization by microtitration or an acid-base titration. It's microscale, which is why it's a microtitration. Microscale means we're using drops, not, millilit not milliliters or liters. So we have three things. We have sodium hydroxide base, hydrochloric acid, our acid, and phenolphthalein. So the phenolphthalein is an indicator. Would you put a little bit of, in fact, go ahead and get another one of those, get the white one, get one of those white paint palettes. Yes, perfect. Would you put in here, in fact, I can clean one right here. Here we go. Clean one right here. Okay. Go ahead and put, what, what she's gonna do right now is she's gonna put a little acid in the acid, right? That's HCl. Good, HCl. Uh, it's okay. And okay. a little base. So she, what you see, she's going to put a little phenolphthalein in with the acid, and notice it stays clear. Now, go ahead and put your base in. It starts off clear. Now watch what happens when she puts a drop of phenolphthalein in. Notice you get a color. Traditionally, we use, would you hold up the phenolphthalein again? We use this indicator because it's clear in an acid, but it turns this vivid pink in the presence of a base. All right, so we're gonna do an acid-base titration with hydrochloric acid, that's an unknown concentration, and sodium hydroxide. The sodium hydroxide, NaOH, is one molar concentration. It's our known. So first she's gonna put 10 drops of hydrochloric acid, in, this is just one of the wells, and this is a reaction plate. And she's just using a disposable transfer pipette. Now, she's gonna put in one drop of the phenolphthalein. This is a step it's easy to forget. And people will say, it's not titrating. And I always ask, did you put in a drop of phenolphthalein? Now, the directions here in this lab say five drops and two five drops of your acid two drops of the phenolphthalein we're doing we're getting pretty good results with 10 drops of the acid and one drop of phenolphthalein so now what she's doing is she's got a different pipette she's marked hers hcl for hydrochloric 
acid and NaOH for the base. What she's going to do is she's going to carefully count the number of drops. And you put a drop, stir. Now notice what happened. It turned pink, but it doesn't stay pink. What we're looking for is it turned pink and stays a really faint pink for 30 seconds. See, each time, it, it's definitely turning pink. It isn't staying pink. Now, it will get, it will stay a little longer. How many drops is that? It's five. Five, okay. And boom, we got it. Sometimes you can see, and that was what, seven? So this is seven drops. In the next episode, we're going to show you then how to do the calculation for the number of drops and how to figure out what concentration that acid is. How do you figure out what the concentration is? We just did the video where we had one molar base and we had an unknown concentration of hydrochloric acid. You can pan over here, the, what, the one we just did. We had the base, one molar NaOH. We don't have it, we don't know how much, what's the concentration of the hydrochloric acid. Okay, go back to the board. Here's what we do know. When they're neutralized, the molarity times the volume of the acid equals the molarity times the volume of the base. That's what neutrality is. We've neutralized the acid in base. And the equation is M1V1 equals M2V2. So here's the situation we have of our acid, okay? The acid, we had 10 drops, pan over here. We put 10 drops of our acid into one of these wells in the reaction plate, but we don't know what concentration it is. We know the concentration of the base, is sodium hydroxide, so we counted how many drops it took. It took seven drops right over here. We added seven drops of this in order to get to the neutral point. And it was like the seventh drop, it changed, okay? So M1V1, the concentration molarity times the volume. In this case, our volume is in drops. So X times 10 drops equals one, right over here, one molar the concentration of the base times seven. So we have 10x equals seven. So x is seven tenths or 0.7. And this is the unknown concentration. Our unknown concentration of the hydrochloric acid is 0.7 molar. So you can do this lab. Let's say you, if you have sodium hydroxide, okay? You can do this lab you grab that too, grab that. If you have, you can do this same lab, this acid-base neutralization by microtitration. If you have hydrochloric acid and one molar sodium hydroxide, if you have the phenolphthalein in the base, you can do the same repetition with, this is vinegar, this is 5% vinegar, just like the jug you buy, lemon juice, any type of juice you have, clear is better, like the lemon juice is a good one to use. You can also vary the concentrations of like hydrochloric or vinegar or even lemon juice. And you can then, we're finding good success. We ran several different tests with different acids. Um, and what we found was 10 drops and one drop of phenolphthalein worked very well. And the process is the same. You know what concentration your base is that you're adding. You don't know what the acid, I don't know what the concentration is of my hydrochloric because it's dilute, it doesn't specify. This is not specified, but usually vinegar is 5%. We can check and see if it is. Lemon juice, no idea, and that's gonna vary with every single bottle. What the, it's, even if it's 100% juice, the concentration is going to vary. So you can do the same process. You can put 10 drops in of, let's say, lemon juice, add one drop of the phenolphthalein, okay, 
and then use a base. Sodium hydroxide is what we usually use to neutralize. That's called the titrant. And what we do is take, count the drops you add. Don't forget you stir between each one. And then use the equation that's up here on the board, M1V1 equals M2V2, and you can calculate then what the concentration is of your unknown, okay? And your unknown, again, it's going to be unknown concentration of an acid, okay? And that's it.